In the middle of the sky, an unconscious man is falling at a very fast speed. His name is Royce and he wakes up just in time to open his parachute right before he falls through the trees of a thick jungle and hits the ground, which knocks him out. Seconds later, he wakes up again to discover he doesn't know where he is or how he got there, but at least he still has his mercenary weapons and clothes. At that moment another man falls next to him. Cuchillo, who is part of a Mexican cartel, aims his weapons at Royce, but before they can react a third man falls between them. His parachute didn't open, so he died on impact. Suddenly someone opens fire on them, and Royce moves quickly to dodge the bullets and appear behind the shooter. Nikolai is a Russian commando, and the last thing he remembers is being at war. Royce and Cuchillo had the same experience, they were going through their days when a light shined and knocked them out, then they appeared in the sky. When they turn around, they find Isabel, a sniper from the Israel Defense Forces, aiming her weapon at them. She explains she's been to many jungles but she can't recognize this one, and that she saw more people falling. They agree to leave together to look for the others, unaware that nearby, Yakuza member Hanzo is watching them. He tries to follow them, but when his shoes touch the mud, Hanzo decides to take them off. The group goes deeper into the jungle and finds two men in the middle of a fight, death row inmate Stans and Mombasa, a rebel from a South African organization. The men end their fight when they see the others and agree to stick together because there's strength in numbers, then Stans mentions some guy on a tree. This is Dr. Edwin, whose parachute got stuck in a branch. Royce rescues him by shooting the branch and making him fall into a lake, then Edwin shares the same story as everyone else with no idea of where they are or what's going on. As the group keeps moving, Isabel has to ignore Stan's creepy and dirty comments. Eventually they find Hanzo in the mud, but he isn't stuck, he's frozen because he's found a strange totem with lots of bones underneath. Mombasa comments that some hunter must be taking trophies and that in his culture, the warrior with the best trophies gets the most respect. Nikolai thinks this is some kind of test but Isabel disagrees because not all of them are military. Cuchillo thinks it's a ransom, Stan says it's an experiment, and then suddenly they're wondering if they're dead and this is hell. Royce shuts them all up and says the reason doesn't matter, what they need is to find a way to escape. The group follows Royce and as they cross the jungle, Nikolai wants to touch a pretty flower. However Edwin stops him, explaining it's poisonous and would cause total paralysis. Nikolai is grateful and promises to protect Edwin in the future. After advancing some more, Isabel asks Royce to slow down and shows him something, she makes an improvised compass and puts it on the water, but it won't stop going in circles. In return, Royce points out that the sun hasn't moved since they arrived, so moving around will be hard. He also tells Isabel that since they're all dangerous fighters plus a doctor, his theory is that they were carefully chosen. Isabel guesses Royce used to be a soldier before he became a mercenary, but he refuses to say more. After more walking, the group comes across a cage and carefully removes the sheet that covers it, only to find it empty. It seems the cage was dropped just like them, and the blood stains indicate some kind of creature was in it. When they look up, they find a bunch of fallen cages stuck on the trees, meaning they'll be having lots of company. Then the group keeps going and suddenly Mombasa trips on a branch, accidentally triggering a trap. Soon a bunch of things are trying to kill them, a huge swinging tree trunk, a bunch of falling wood stakes, and even a huge bear trap, but they dodge them all. Isabel runs and falls into a hole, managing to survive by holding onto the edge. Royce runs to her and saves her right before she falls, then Isabel uses the scope on her weapon to find the person behind the traps, only to discover he's already dead. Judging the decomposition, Edwin mentions the guy has been dead for two weeks, and Nikolai checks the pockets to discover he used to be a USA Special Forces soldier. Royce realizes the traps weren't for them but for whatever killed the guy, which he believes to be much bigger than them because of the trap's position. As they start moving again, Mombasa thinks there's something among the trees but decides to ignore it. However he isn't wrong, someone is watching them with infrared technology and repeating anything they say. Moments later, they manage to reach the edge of the jungle and look up at the sky, only to receive a huge shock, a bunch of weird planets and stars indicate that they're not on Earth. Royce decides they must find who put them here to ask them to send them back. The group re-enters the jungle and suddenly, a drone quickly flies near the heads, freaking stands out. He complains about his lack of guns and threatens Mombasa for one, but before they can start another fight, they hear growling coming from the jungle. At that moment, a horrible beast appears running toward them, and the group immediately opens fire. The beast is quickly killed, but there's a bunch more of its kind coming. Since they have no guns, Edwin and Stans begin running away. A monster comes after Edwin as he trips, but Isabel kills it with a perfect shot. While Nikolai and Hanzo shoot down another beast, Royce kills one by using just his knife. Stans is jumped on by a monster too and tries his best to defend himself with a knife, luckily Mombasa arrives and kills the creature with a few shots. Edwin climbs a tree while Isabel is cornered by a beast and she considers self-deleting, but at that moment, a whistle can be heard deep in the jungle and all the beasts suddenly run away. Afterward, the group reunites and reaches a simple conclusion, they're being hunted. Those creatures were hunting dogs testing the enemy, and the whistle called them back. The planet is a huge hunting ground and all the beings that are brought in the cages serve as the prey. 
Suddenly Mombasa notices someone is missing and they hear Kuchio's voice calling for help among the trees. The group follows the noise and finds Kuchio on his knees because of severe injuries, so Isabel tries to come closer to help him. However Royce stops her and says it's a trap, proving it by throwing a stone. Stans points out there's nothing they can do for him and the other guys agree, ignoring Isabel's protests. As the men leave, Isabel decides to end Kuchio's suffering and shoots him, however she can hear him asking for help again. Isabel runs away as it's revealed that Kuchio had been dead all along and the voice had been a recording used by the hunter in the shadows, who is watching now too. The group keeps walking for a while and Royce analyzes the few clues he has to guess how the enemy behaves, this hunter wants them to run, so Royce thinks they should follow the dog tracks and get to the hunter first. Moments later, the group finds a camp and is disgusted by the creepy sight, the bodies of various different races are hanging on stakes and the ground is covered with the remains of various creatures, confirming that not only humans are brought to this planet as prey. At the back of the camp, they're shocked to find a huge ugly creature tied to a stake known as a predator. While Royce notices that Isabel is having a weird reaction to it, Nikolai comes closer and pokes the alien with his weapon, only for the creature to roar at them because it's actually alive. Isabel says they should leave immediately, but Edwin notices Royce is gone. Suddenly a bunch of spears pop out and kill Mombasa, causing Royce to rush out from the shadows and start firing wildly. The other guys help him and such a huge wave of bullets reveals that the hunter is also a predator using a cloaking device. The group begins running away as the predator shoots at them with lasers, causing explosions and flames all over the place. As they escape, the group ends up rolling down a hill and falling off a cliff into a river. They start swimming to safety, unaware that a drone detects their location and takes it back to the camp, where it's revealed that there are a total of three hunting predators. Once the group is safe in a cave, Isabel hits Royce for using them as bait. However Royce doesn't regret it because now they finally know who is after them and some details about their strength and hunting methods. Then Royce confronts Isabel about her reaction to the predator, saying she must have seen one before. Isabel admits she's heard a story saying that aliens that look like these ones were seen in 1987 in Guatemala, which is a reference to the first movie. Royce wants to set up a defensive perimeter and force the predators into a choke point, and the others accept to help. They take their positions in the jungle and Isabel notices movement among the trees with her scope, but the enemy isn't attacking them so Royce thinks they may know about the traps. They change the plan and use Edwin as bait, so he runs through the jungle until the enemy begins chasing them. Isabel uses her sniper skills to shoot the hunter down, then the group approaches the body to discover it isn't a predator but actually another victim from the cages. However this isn't the creature she killed because she missed and her shot is on a tree. Suddenly they start hearing a voice and someone appears behind Royce using a cloaking device. The hunter takes off his mask and reveals he isn't a predator, he's actually another human called Noland, who tells them to be less loud to avoid being heard by the hunters. Noland has heard the group since they arrived and after pointing out a storm is coming, he brings them all back to his hideout, which is in an old broken ship. Noland also used to be in the military and was dropped here in a box 10 seasons ago, becoming the only survivor from that batch. Since then he stayed hidden and survived by scavenging from the predators and their victims. Being here has obviously taken a toll on him because sometimes he talks to an imaginary friend. Noland also knows a few things about the Predator since he's killed two or three, it's important to hide humans' heat signature not to be detected, it also seems that big Predators and small Predators don't get along, which explains the one they saw tied up. Every season new victims are brought over and three Predators would come with new technology and tactics to hunt because they're constantly evolving. Royce realizes that if Predators keep coming back each season, then they must have a ship around, but Noland points out they wouldn't be able to pilot it. Afterward, Noland goes to bed, and the group chats for a while. Nikolai shows Edwin a picture of his kids and Stan shows them a creepy tattoo he has of his sister. Hanzo finds a samurai sword and compliments it, making Edwin realize he does speak English. He wonders why Hanzo hadn't said a word until now, and Hanzo reveals he's missing fingers because he was punished for saying too much. Isabel shares with Royce her theory that they were chosen because on Earth they were the predators and therefore monsters too, but Royce is obsessed with finding the ship, and he thinks he could convince the captured predator in the camp to fly it because the enemy of the enemy is a friend. Suddenly smoke begins filling the room and they discover Nolan is gone. The door is also blocked, so Edwin thinks Nolan must be trying to kill them to steal all their things. While Nolan is shown outside fanning the fire, Royce blasts a bomb against the wall that sends Nolan running but doesn't even crack the wall. However Royce wasn't trying to break it, he made noise on purpose to get the attention of a nearby predator. The plan works and soon Nolan finds the hallway blocked by a predator, who immediately blows up Nolan using lasers. Then the alien hits a panel on the wall to create a small access into the group's room but it doesn't do anything else just to toy with them. Royce carefully comes closer and puts his gun into the hole to shoot a flare, confirming the predator is nowhere to be seen. The group finishes pushing the panel off and finally escapes, now they must find their way out through some very dark corridors. On their way out, Edwin accidentally ends up separated from the group and begins yelling for help as he lits up another flare, which gets the attention of the predator. Edwin hears a growl in the darkness and runs away until he finally finds the group again. He begs for help, 
but the group chooses to leave without him. At that moment, the predator appears in front of Edwin but before it can attack, Nikolai shows up to help. Edwin runs while Nikolai fights the alien, but he doesn't last long. The predator stabs Nikolai and picks him up with its blade, so Nikolai takes the chance to spit on the alien's face before activating a detonator. The resulting explosion kills them both and a shockwave sweeps through the ship, but the group manages to get out just in time. Outside the ship, Stans begins celebrating the fact they killed an alien, only to be suddenly knocked down by a predator that is now turning off its invisibility. The beast is about to kill Royce but Stans jumps on it and starts stabbing the predator while telling the others to run. Furious over losing its prey, the predator throws Stans on the ground and rips out his spine. Then it roars and gets the attention of the third predator, who starts following the tracks left by the running group. At that moment, Hanzo hears they're being followed and tells the others to leave while he stays behind to buy them time. After the remaining trio leaves, Hanzo takes off his jacket and unsheathes his katana just in time to be found by the predator, who takes out its blade as well. A fierce sword fight begins and although Hanzo is pushed away by the alien's strength a few times, he still manages to cut its stomach. After they exchange a few more blows, they attack each other at the same time and both fall to the ground, dying at the same time as well. Meanwhile Edwin accidentally steps on a trap and can't walk. Royce points out the trap wasn't meant to kill but to hold the enemy, and Edwin is now dead weight. As Royce says they should either leave Edwin behind or booby trap him, Edwin shows them Nikolai's family picture, pretending it's his own kids. Isabel refuses to abandon or hurt Edwin, so Royce leaves alone. Moments later, Royce makes it to the camp and talks to the captured predator, offering freedom in exchange for leaving this planet. When the alien confirms it can understand him, Royce cuts the chains to release him, and the predator responds by grabbing him by the neck. After a close look, the beast lets go of Royce and picks up its mask to put it back on, activating its equipment. On its arm brace, the Predator pulls up a star map of the universe and stops on planet Earth, sealing the deal before calling it spaceship. In the meantime, Isabel is helping Edwin walk, but they end up stepping on a trap and getting caught in a net. The third Predator is waiting for them and immediately begins dragging them back to camp, where it throws the humans in a pit before noticing that its alien prey is now free. Both Predators immediately start fighting and Royce uses the chance to run toward the ship. As the spacecraft takes off, the predators keep on fighting and after exchanging a few hits and shots, the alien that has been chasing them overpowers the owner of the ship and cuts off its head. After celebrating its victory, the predator blows up the ship before it can go far. In the pit, Isabel says she doesn't regret staying to help Edwin, who surprises her from behind and attacks her with his poison-covered scalpel. It turns out Edwin is a psychopathic murderer and he feels at home with other monsters, so he wants to stay on this planet. He's about to kill Isabel when suddenly Roy shows up because he never got to the ship in the end. Royce helps the duo get out of the pit and Isabel wants to tell him about Edwin, but the paralysis caused by the poison doesn't let her speak. After moving away from the pit, Royce checks on Isabel and Edwin tries to surprise him from behind, but Royce reacts fast and grabs him by the neck to hurt him with his own poison. Next, Royce booby traps Edwin and leaves him for the predator to find. When the alien comes closer and touches Edwin, it activates a bunch of grenades that kill the doctor, start a fire, and send the predator flying. Once the creature recovers, it finds Royce waiting for him. But Royce feeds the flames and hides among them to mess with the alien's infrared sensor, which is the only way it can see. Then Royce grabs an axe and begins running around, hitting the predator and running into the flames to then repeat the process. After getting hit a bunch of times, the predator concentrates on finding Royce's heartbeat and shoots the tree Royce is hiding behind, hurting him. Then the alien begins throwing Royce around, but before it can kill him, Isabel drags her body to reach her weapon and shoots. The alien is hurt but still alive and shoots back a dagger at Isabel's shoulder, so Royce uses the distraction to retrieve his axe and repeatedly hit the predator. Then he finally finishes the fight by cutting the alien's head off. Afterward, Royce reunites with Isabel, and together they watch how more cages start falling from the sky. Royce announces they must find a way to leave soon. 